This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.37 p.m. on June 2nd, 2019. It is an absolutely gorgeous summer evening, so I'm assuming that because of the beautiful weather out there, I'm sure in both coasts, east and west coast, some of our members, all of our members enjoying the evening instead of sitting here listening to a uh, strategic webinar delivered uh, on the markets. Anyway, uh, this session will be recorded, uploaded to the Google YouTube channel and uh, for anyone's viewing pleasure at their own time. Uh, please spread the word around. It's available to anyone out there with the internet connection, as I like to remind every single time. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. We're going to keep this tonight short and straight to the point. We have had a very uh, powerful webinar explaining the pullback levels in the market, uh, the pain trade, as they like to call it on Wall Street, uh, where the reflect bounces are going to be. And all that is explained in the previous webinar that was delivered uh, on Thursday evening. So feel free to view that. This is simply a continuation of that uh, based on my forecast. And that is exactly what is happening right now. Futures are down roughly about 13 points. They were down about 17 or 18 earlier on. So there's a slight bounce coming off um, as, as the Asian markets open. China is going to be opening around 9.30 this evening, I believe, and uh, somewhere, somewhere around that time. And um, of course, uh, the reaction on the Chinese market after this, a flurry of headlines, uh, negative headlines primarily this weekend, um, uh, we will see what the reaction of the markets are. So uh, before I go any, go any further, I'd like to update people on what happened over the weekend. Well, number one, what happened was China, is sent a, China issued a white paper or a uh, policy paper, uh, as they say in the business, uh, on uh, the, the U.S. Uh, uh, trade tariffs, additional trade tariffs, and the overall trade war. Uh, you can read up on it. I, it's on breaking news on my uh, real-time private Twitter feed. Feel free to uh, educate yourself a little bit. And as expected, they fought back hard, uh, saying it's of all the fault of the United States. And uh, just like any other uh, 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 schoolyard fight, uh, both parties claim innocence. So nothing really new there as such. From a retaliatory standpoint, uh, they issued some veiled threats on uh, what they might retaliate on. However, it was good to see, and I noticed that, uh, that they did not talk about any particular technology companies that would be under the retaliate, retaliatory list uh, from the Chinese side. So that, I'm sure, is a bit of a relief uh, for large giants like Apple uh, and uh, pretty much all our major um, uh, technology hardware companies that sell into China. Keep in mind that Amazon does not do business in China uh, and uh, Netflix does not do business in China. And uh, there are a slew of companies out there uh, which are not, are not China dependent. Uh, most of our chip companies are. Uh, they have um, subsidiaries that assemble uh, chips in China. Uh, Apple assembles their phone. Remember, the technology is always here, but the assembly part is done in China. So Apple is obviously uh, always feared that they might retaliate against Apple. My thinking on the overall picture is they will not retaliate on Apple as Apple has not. Apple is one of the largest employers in China. Uh, so obviously the Chinese don't want to shoot themselves on their own foot by retaliating against Apple. There are many other ways they can retaliate, especially on the agricultural side um, and, and other sides. They have started investigation on FedEx. Uh, they can retaliate by not buying Boeing planes. So there's a lot of ways to do it. So please read on that. So that's number one. So we got that. The second thing was um, uh, we had um, uh, which President Trump is visiting uh, the United Kingdom, England, uh, for the next three days. He's on his way there right now. And there's going to be some fireworks on the Brexit side, as uh, President Trump has somewhat uh, commented that he would like to see a no-deal Brexit, which from a financial market standpoint is a negative. Um, aside from that, uh, the good news is there was another headline over the weekend, which is extremely important for markets who are very nervous that we would get into a firefight but with the mullahs in Iran, uh, who do have quite a, a formidable military might. Uh, uh, Secretary Pompeo uh, commented on Saturday that he they are open to negotiating uh, with the Iranian government without any preconditions. 
that itself is uh, quite a bit of news. I'll tell you that uh, because uh, they, you know, after uh, uh, a lot of uh, heavy duty uh, threats against the Iranians who are not uh, uh, Iranian government, I should say, who are not very nice, mind you, from a military standpoint too, meddling in other countries' affairs and such. Uh, Saudi Arabia, which is a complete Iran hater. Um, and uh, so they were they're kind of prodding us to uh, pick a uh, firefight with Iran. And of course, our generals, our our Navy and uh, our great armed forces, I don't think they want to get into a firefight with Iran. OK, so it was good to hear that uh, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo, a real smart guy, mentioned that uh, they would they would sit with the Iranian government. Uh, for uh, to defuse the situation, the tensions without any preconditions. That's a big set of words. Okay, so that that was a plus. Um, the so aside from that, if you go on my Twitter feed and look through, um, oh, how could I forget the avocado Mexican standoff? I mean, that's a big thing. So let's put it this way: Mexico knows us really well. Okay. They do not want to get into a war of words or a Twitter fight or any type of trade war fight with President Trump and the current administration. Why? It's quite simple. We saw we uh, uh, over, over a period of a year um, went back and forth and signed the USMCA, United States, Mexico, Canada um, uh, trade. They call it the new NAFTA. Uh, trade agreement, the USMCA, I believe that's what the uh, acronym is, uh, very successfully. And now we're, and, and uh, President Trump is going to get, try to get Congress and the uh, uh, Democrats uh, to uh, ratify it. It's, it's a big thing. You know, we just recently uh, removed the tariffs on, um, on uh, 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 Canadian steel, worked out a great deal with the Mexicans. And then right after that, he issues that threat on Thursday, which really was a black swan event. I, you know, it was more of a political gesture than anything else, uh, but it was uh, quite fearsome uh, that five uh, percent tariffs on all Mexican goods, given the fact that almost 65 to 70 percent, I think 65 percent of U.S. companies, especially on the auto sector and machinery sector, produce and assemble their goods in Mexico. So come on, you know, five percent tariff, you go figure who's going to get hurt. I leave it up to you guys. All right. The Mexicans certainly are going to get hurt. The Mexican economy is going to go into a tailspin uh, short term, and we are certainly going to get hurt. No question about it. That's why the market reacted the way they did. That's the way it goes. So, and of course, uh, all the tomatoes and avocados and you name it, you know, all come from Mexico. Um, beef comes from Mexico. So there's heavy duty stuff going on. So the, the so my thought process is the Mexican foreign minister immediately got on a plane and then uh, uh, came, uh, came to D.C. and they're starting talks tomorrow. They are not going to get into a fire, uh, trade war fight with the Americans. No question about it with us. All right. Just remember that. So the Mexican situation, in my opinion, will be diffused. Um, this immigration thing is a serious uh, matter. And Mexico has taken some measures, but they need to take more forceful measures to control their borders and not uh, let caravans of people who are unfortunately very destitute and poor, uh, to, primarily because their governments are corrupt as crap. And um, it's a fact. And, uh, and these guys uh, should, uh, should try to better their own countries. I mean, the governments of Ecuador and El Salvador and, and all those places, um, uh, Bolivia, uh, and these people are the ones who are crossing through Mexico. It's not Mexican migrants per se, it's all these other South American migrants. And these people are obviously gravitating towards where they feel that they have a better life. But you can't really... You know, there has to be a, a control somewhere. Uh, and uh, so obviously uh, it was the right type of move, but putting tr the trade, uh, the new NAFTA and the, uh, the, the North, uh, the, and the USMCA, the Mexico, Canada trade thing all into jeopardy is not really a smart move. So the markets got really scared, okay? Just face facts. I think that thing's gonna be diffused. And I think that's why the futures are not down 20, 25 points. Uh, right now on the S&P handles. And um, so what can I say? You know, that's my thought process. Overall, we're on a technical breakdown on the last leg of the first breakdown. If things escalate, ladies and gentlemen, I've said that on my last, uh, uh, on my last uh, um, uh, webinar, explained it extremely well. We're going to go down a lot more. We're going to go down a lot more, okay? 
and uh, and if the, if the if the high yield market and the very sensitive uh, high leveraged junk bond market or the lower rated bond market starts to quiver, uh, uh, you're going to see um, you're going to see the market fall two three thousand points. No problem, no problem. We're already down about two thousand points, right, from the top. So um, so the fact is, how do we decipher all this? We just can't talk about it on a qualitative basis. We talk about it on a quantitative basis. Okay, so let's talk about the quantitative part. How do we make money off this situation? Everybody knows the news is bad out there. We know that we are having a major trade war with China. We do. We know that the Chinese military is not happy, and the naval are not happy with our warships going through what they consider to be their territorial waters. You know, it's like having Chinese ships like go through the 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 the, the Mississippi River. I'm just I'm kidding, but seriously, you know. So um. You know, the Chinese claim that South China Sea, a lot of it is theirs. That's why it's called the South China Sea, I guess. I don't know. So the bottom line is we say, no, it's international waters. A lot of other con countries are with us on that, especially countries in the uh, in the Asian bloc. Um, but, uh, you know, we certainly don't want to get into military stuff with China. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, seriously. Yeah. Um, so, and it's not going to happen. I'll tell you that, you know. So regardless of all the heated rhetoric, so we all know what the news is bad. So now we're going to talk about how we're going to make money. And we have been. You know, we shorted the market on the spies. We got some serious numbers in the triple digits, 100 to 200% on the spy calls, you know, 30, 40 cents call going to 2 or $3. Um, we even made money on the long side on a bunch of stocks. Um, and I've told everyone straight out, in these type of circumstances, you want to minimize your exposure. You can't live on hope in this type of thing. We are in a technical breakdown, ladies and gentlemen. I am not a bear, you know that, okay? And neither am I stupid. Well, don't ask my wife that. But uh, uh, but the fact is that uh, uh, you know I'm I'm a ta I'm a very opportunistic tactical trader. So what does that mean in simple English? I try to make money of what I see happening, what I think is going to happen. And even if you're short really hard, it doesn't give you the uh, give you the two three hundred percent right away, okay? This is the actual futures right now. This is what we were at 27.32, one of the first support levels. And this is where we are right now at 27.39. So we're up about seven points of the lows. Does not change the overall trend, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see on this naked chart, which doesn't have the fancy structures, which we're going to, which I'm going to show you on my chart. Look at this chart going all the way back from the height, uh, um, uh, the all time high, which was uh, back in April, right there. Uh, so if you draw a line, you can clearly see we're in a downtrend, but in between the downtrend, and this is what I want to impress on all of you, and I show, I'm show i sure all of you, I mean, most of you know this, and I'm sure most of you are not as naive as, you know, I really wouldn't want to think most of you are as naive as uh, the, a lot of other people out there. Markets never go down in a straight line, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I've shown that repeatedly. We have had numerous, multiple in this downtrend since uh, since April, since the highs of the market. Um, which have been four, five, six hundred points. Markets opening down six hundred points. We're playing reversal trades and generating significant profits on the worst days that the market opens up at. So some of you are taking advantage of it. It's not easy. I know that. It's not that hard either. And some of you are waiting for some Nirvana, La La Land, you know, where Mickey's going to serve you breakfast or Minnie's going to serve you breakfast. I don't know. And uh, and uh, you're going to fly in on a unicorn up to the, you know. Uh, to see some magical star, you know what? That's not the stock market, and that's not what you know. If you're that kind of a trader, um, I suggest stop being a trader. Just keep on learning from clueless at trading till you really are try, you know, figure out. So you don't want to be people like out there watching CNBC and listening to Fox News and I mean Fox Financial Network and listening to MMS and uh, the all the, uh, the financial network, Bloomberg, um, or your local nightly things. So, oh, market was down 700 points. Well. That's the headline news, what's happening underneath. So what's happening underneath is really quite simple. We have had, and this is what tactical trading is all about. This was the high. Let me change the color. And sometimes it's important to go back to the basics of understanding the dynamics of what happened. And this is how the markets have found big moves up. Bang, fall, come down, bang, go up, go, crash. Boom. I can't even do sound effects that much. And this is where we are right now. We very, very might come down here a little bit, or maybe from here, we do another one of this and we come down. So this is what the reality of what markets do. So as a trader, 
as a tactical trader, whether you're a swing trader, whether you're a day trader, day traders obviously can benefit more because they have their eyes glued to the screens. They have the uh, luxury of all the real-time clueless day trading charts, which are precise to the almost to the dot. You know, I'm not going to pat myself on the back and say, oh, I told you exactly what's going to happen, but I'll tell you overall exactly that's what's going to happen. All right, so take advantage of it. I don't know your speed. I don't know the capital you did. You actually don't need that much capital to trade these type of markets. You can trade with small money. So that part you can just throw away. I don't know your speed. I don't know your risk tolerance. I don't know what's in your brain. Um, so that's up to you to figure out. But these are the types of markets, ladies and gentlemen, where you can learn the most from. This is the type of market that makes you an adult, okay, in this business. So if you always want to be a little crybaby and just like, no, you know, I lost this much money and now I can't make money, you can always make back money. Always. I've been there. I know it. I go through it. Okay? So you can always make money. The question is, how hard do you want to work to make that money? Most people say, ah, I want to have a lot of money but they don't want to work smart and hard. And the hard part is learning how to do it to make that money. So stop with the wussy excuses. Just fight on. And these are the type of markets that's going to build your mental muscle, your trading muscle, so that you can face anything. And this is not the first time we've gone through markets like this. Come on. But this, so not, but deal, let's deal with the here and now. So these are the type of markets that's going to build your mental muscle. And you're going to be the ultimate trader in the months going ahead. That is the only thing I can guarantee you. Only if you put in the mental effort to learn the skills. Some of you take the advanced coaching sessions, you're two steps forward. You understand what I'm putting through, you react better. Some of you don't go through my charts and stuff and take advantage of that great and some of you just don't do anything i have nothing to say to you guys you know ladies and gentlemen because i'm sorry i don't deal with quitters so let's move on so let's go into the charts ladies and gentlemen futures are down about 12 i actually want futures to be down 20 given the fact that we have some spy puts out there i'd like to cash those and play the reversal plays depending on what happens but let this is what's happening technically all right, and this is not the first time you're seeing this. And part of working a little bit smarter and a little bit harder is not to just to look at those beautiful, cute, you know, gorgeous charts that I put out there, but try to understand what with those arrows and with the lines and with the structures, what they mean. And I don't care. I repeat, if you're a swing trader or if you are busy during the day or, or, or you're a day trader, because swing traders can make a lot of money too. Here we are, nothing to see. This is a short-term chart. These are the, these are the type of uh, uh, intraday 15-minute uh, candles that you can trade. These are the flash crashes when the market opened. Uh, oh, no, this was, this was the big, uh, big move down um, on Thursday, uh, at Thursday when he issued the Mexican threat on Mac, you know, the tariffs on Mexico. This was Friday, and this is where we are right now. So really nothing to explain. Just have to look at it. I've drawn the structures. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, showing you at least technically speaking, uh, that uh, here we are. We should retest. Realistically, we should retest 2920. Sometimes it might not get there. This is where we closed that on Friday, and this was one of those channels. Going all the way back to, if you extrapolate it back a little bit, back to the 15th of uh, May, not too long ago, then that was, sorry, this was uh, this was one uh, uh, inflection point where the markets bounced really hard. This was the buffer that we were trading off repeatedly before we broke below that, tried to re-enter it, fell below that. 
It's just the way it works. Try to re-enter it again on the on the 30th, um, failed. And every one of these levels were pain pointed out. I told you guys to buy it here. I told you guys that if it, this is going to be major resistance. All there in printed format on the real-time Twitter feed. And that's why the arrow was put there. And boom, it got close to that. Started selling off. No magic. All right. This is the way it works. So bottom line is I drew this line here, this, this parallel line. And you can see, lo and behold, the market hit that line right now in the past hour since two hours, you know, 6 p.m. when Globex Future started trading. Like magic. I didn't draw this line today. And look at that. It hit it there. Now it's bouncing. Now it's bouncing. Is that going to be the final bounce? I don't know. Do we test 27.20? Not sure yet, but let's look at the slightly longer term chart. So this is your intraday type of charts. This is showing you in right now what is going on. These are the charts you want to use repeatedly to manage your trades, manage your profits during the day. I know it's gets frustrating because each of these candles are 15 minutes and they can be extremely choppy. Monkeys on a hot tin roof. That's what the algos do. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is a one hour chart. There are four 15 minute segments in one hour, right? We all know that. So it cuts out the noise a little bit and this is where we are. Now, if you want to look at it purely from a pure stochastic standpoint, we got deep oversold and right now, on a one hour basis, over the past hour, we got oversold because we gapped down. We gapped down about 15 points on all the uh, all the stuff that I explained to you earlier on or that happened over the weekend. Many of you, I know, don't follow the news. Um, I, don't, I don't really blame you, um, but I am connected literally 24 seven in my sleep, what's happening in the world. Uh, that's just me. And um, and like I said, uh, the, the important breaking news, I put it out, uh, put it out there for your edification uh, in the, and, 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 and for your benefit, um, it's right there. Breaking news, China, what they came out with their, what the, what their uh, 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 white paper on, um, on the trade uh, war and all that other stuff. So if you just want to condense it, just open up the Twitter feed. Something is important there, read it. So you don't have to scour through the other stuff that I do. So anyway, so this is where we are right now. We got oversold, so we're having a little bit of a bounce here. The primary downtrend is very intact. It's obvious, you know. It's obvious, you know. Uh, even a child can tell you that this is a downtrend. This is your big fat downtrend line, and uh, these uh, there are other downtrend lines here. All these channels are pointing down. However, within these channels, you're going to get this type of move. Right, but the trend is still down. The only thing that I added to this tonight, based on 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 the futures opening down, and I want futures to open down really ugly tomorrow morning. I really do. Okay, I want 2700, 2720. I don't think it's going to happen. Looking at it right now, but let's see when China markets open how they react. But like I said, the Chinese uh, 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 press conference uh, where the Chinese government basically uh, explained their position on this trade war was nothing new, was nothing new, you know, in a, in a, in a hardcore trade war, what are they going to say? Oh, we're the bad guys. You guys are the best guys, you know, so we did everything wrong. Of course, they're not going to say that. They're going to try to defend themselves as much as they can. Um, and that's exactly what they did. So there's nothing new on that, in my opinion. So let's just do this one. And let's do this. And remember, we're covering the technical part of it right now, just in case anyone is confused which i'm sure you guys are not extend and if we go like this where does that come to remember this is the zone we are concentrating right now 2700 2700 roughly 2692 or so on the e-minis and and down and, and basically um sorry what am i saying 2700 2900 on the top end and uh, 2,700 or so on the bottom end. So these are markers that, I, that I've been using lately to make it more easier, much easier for all of you to follow. And um, this was the line that uh, the line in the sand we wanted to hold. 
because we were trading in this zone, if you all remember, uh, for almost two weeks we were doing this. Till we broke. Then we tried to re-enter it, didn't work. Here, this, this, this red candle was the, the avocado war. Well, we shouldn't make light of that. They were much more serious people. I mean, there's a lot of people whose jobs are at risk here in the US because of, you know, especially auto workers and stuff, uh, auto part companies and everything, real American companies. So I shouldn't be kidding around about that. Um, so, and a lot of farmers too, because they sell a lot, uh, the, the Mexican farmers sell a lot of stuff to us, but we also sell quite a, a bit of stuff to them. And Mexico also happens to be our, one of our largest oil trading partners. So there's some serious stuff going on. Okay, guys, uh, most of you don't know that, but uh, you know, Mexico is not just for Cancun vacations, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Um, they are our third largest partner uh, next to Canada and the United Kingdom. So so, we, so that's one of the main reasons why they are not going to you know, start a trade war with us. They can't afford to. And more importantly, uh, they will basically uh, try to convince and, and hopefully do the right thing by putting in more stringent measures and not having their southern borders completely open, which, I, which they are not. But still, they need to be more strong on on on, on blocking um, blocking um, thousands and thousands of people from Central America to flow through their country. You know, so I'm sure they'll they'll, they'll work on that. Uh, that's why their uh, response immediately was not one of indignation and threats. It was more conciliatory. If you read the articles uh, that I posted out there. And the new Mexican president is, is uh, I, goes, I, I believe he goes by the acronym AMLO, A-M-L-O, uh, Obrador something. He's a very smart guy and he's not going to be mess up, mess, he's not going to be messing up his uh, own economy. Uh, and Mexico is a pretty large economy um, by starting a uh, heated war of words uh, with President Trump. So I think they're going to be smart about this. Okay, now saying all that, um, this is where we are. So if we go, if we, if, if all hell breaks loose, we're going to 2680. You can see that very clearly, and I'll be showing this chart I always do during the day tomorrow. So uh, on the uh, on the other hand, uh, I'm looking at the basically around 2700. We need to test 2700 from a technical standpoint. We need to have a real, 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 real washout. Okay, where like it's like not the what do they say whites of the eyes where it's like you, you you see the lobes in your brain okay it's like it has to be something like that we need to have like a six seven eight hundred point type of drop might not happen it happens in pieces but seriously like a full-scale capitulation a full-scale capitulation would bring us down to about 2680 so 2680 20 40 60 points from where we are right now um is roughly another 400 to 500 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Can we get it? We sure can, and we should. We should, okay? There's a lot of negatives out there, but more importantly, technically speaking, we need that type of washout. And I'll show you that on the, as we zoom out more, on the weekly. So this is uh, your one hour chart. This is the one I'm looking at. Uh, futures are down about 13 and a half. By 9.30 or so, when the Chinese markets open, um features will chinese markets open up you never know you see one thing i learned about this business is like we can sit there and act all smart and like oh you know i'm i'll give you uh, i'm giving you some real macro global game theory stuff and boom markets open is going completely the other way because at this point what's happening i want you guys to understand that all of you are adults all of you have real jobs all of you have real lives is that the news has gotten so bad incrementally especially over the past two, three weeks. It was it was getting better before, if you guys remember, right? So, um, and this, this re-escalation of global tensions um, with China being one of the, one of the uh, uh, major uh, uh, issues, now it's just like the markets are like, well, are we, like how far valuation-wise can we come down? So they're like, we can come down quite a bit more. I mean, we can come down a lot more, but the markets at one point is called selling fatigue. And that's, I think we're getting to that zone right now. And when selling fatigue happens, what happens after that? We get one of those 600, 700, 800 point rallies and, it, and then the market comes down again. 
So are we at that stage yet? In my opinion, not yet. But if all of you, some of you just waiting for that perfect nirvana moment, like you're not going to be there because you weren't there before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can't be like, oh, exactly at 2.15 p.m., uh, it's going to be the turn. That's going to be the low in the market. That, that kind of crap doesn't work. you got to be slipping and sliding a little bit. And once you get towards those levels, which we should be able to see on the longer term charts, you should be in there hard. And one of the things that I follow very religiously uh, on the technically religiously is the New York Stock Exchange and McLaren Oscillator, which we will look at in the next couple of minutes. Once we get to that minus 60, minus 70 levels, oh boy, that's like more than a perfect moment. That's when you make your whole week, your whole month, maybe you can make your whole year in trading in a week or so or less. Have any of you done that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. And I've shown that quite a few times. So if you're going to do the same same stuff again, I'm not going to say stupid, but if you're going to do the same stuff again, you get to those levels and you just sit there saying, oh, do I get into that? I get in. Oh, my God. You know, um, that's your loss, not mine. So we're getting there. Okay, we're getting there. Because like they say, excuse my French, the shit is hitting the fan in a big way. All right. So get ready. It's already happening. but We need a little bit more. But this time, please just don't sit around. Get aggressive at those levels where you can turn the TV on without or, or without everyone crying and screaming that it's all over. And technically, we'll see it. That's what we do here. We look at the technical signals. So I'm just giving you guys some very early it's not a warning it's more of a helpful suggestion okay let's uh look at the let's look at the daily so here we are with the daily very nice okay we'll walk you guys through this listen to my last webinar so what's happening here in the daily we're very oversold but we are on a descending triangle or a falling wedge now what does that mean it means that the that the dogmatic shorts now are getting a little too giddy because every day the market goes up a little bit, then falls. So what happens from a behavioral cognitive standpoint? You get complacent. Just the way hardcore bulls get complacent on the way up, like, no, market can never stop going up. It just keeps on going up. No, it's just going to keep on going up. Then President Trump comes in and says, we, should, we will be up another 5,000 points. If the Fed didn't, uh, you know, uh, hike rates, we'll be up 10,000 points. Like, okay, thank you very much. Okay, good old Don, just run the country. Don't talk about the stock market that much. You notice he hasn't said one word about the stock market? I love Donald. Okay, He's my fellow New Yorker, right? So that's where we are. He just goes quiet. So what's he going to say? Because right now, whatever he says is not going to do anything to the stock market. The stock market needs to find its own floor. So what happens is the complacency on the bearish side is where they are. With, it's getting there right now. But they're getting very complacent. Like, short, 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 short. We're going to make money. All right? Okay. That's what a falling wedge is all about. So let me show you how it works. It's behavioral dynamics tra uh, translated into technical dynamics. So the hardcore shorts are getting in instead of getting in where's that pen looking for there so the time to short was this when these things broke okay and i've been showing these things little attempt to go higher within this wedge that fails so that's it you know short you can clearly see here there's a pattern anyone can see this that is 2720. Now it doesn't have to touch 2720. It needs to get close to it. And if we break 2720, we're going all the way to 2650. That's it. And the sooner and the faster it happens, the better off it is for us. Because we'll short it on the way, we'll get the meat in the middle. You can't be touching exactly at the bottom because the machines will go into overdrive on the, sh on the short uh, covering side, which it does many days that you won't even have time to cover your puts and sell them. You bought something at 60 cents, it's up at $2.50. You're like, okay, you know, and it goes to three. If you're not selling it on the way up, it'll hit that $3 mark and immediately you turn your head. Within 10 minutes, it'll be a 
massive bullish candle and you're it'll be back to 70 cents this is what happens in the reality in the markets on an intraday short basis that's also what happens look at the ones the spikes with 275s a lot of a lot of a good portion of the day they weren't going up anymore and then by the end of the day bang buck 50. you know it if you guys are real traders you know it what i'm talking about so bottom line is so let's take a look at this this is your daily then we're going to look at the weekly we're zooming out here right technically we're broken at this point what does that mean armageddon no it simply means that the market wants to go down i've explained this in a previous video i'm not going to spend too much time on this we have a major crossover of the 34 day moving average and we have the 50 day moving average starting to buckle down we have the mid bollinger crashing through these lines come on you know it doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out but the question is that how far have we come how far can we go most we can go to at this point is 2720 at that point you will get an immediate reflex bounce no question about it that's a high probability trade if it gets there right there okay that's a high probability trade just like that and then you're going to move like this a couple of hundred points it's going to go straight up it's going to try to re-enter this ascending i mean this 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 triangle over tw uh, over 2770 and if it goes up it does that for whatever reason okay and i'll tell you one of the reasons the mexican foreign minister and his delegation are meeting monday and they're meeting wednesday you can bet money on this that they are going to come up with positive statements that with joint press conferencing mexico is doing what they're doing and president trump will tweet out saying well i'm reasonably pleased with what mexico has to do they have to do more and bang the market's going to go up 400 points okay mark my words so and that's going to happen and that's probably the reason why futures are not down 20 25 points now the china thing is getting so serious at this point it's like a fight with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband or your wife or whatever the fight gets so bad then you make peace because you got to live in the same house unless you guys have a divorce that's a different story i don't know about that stuff okay so that's what's happening right now china and the us are married globally from a business standpoint so it's gotten so bad right now plates flying whatever i was never into throwing things so i wouldn't know so um what do you call it's gotten so ugly that something is going to happen out of this worst is it keeps on dragging on and on and the markets are just like you know they completely lose faith if the markets completely lose faith whether the trade deal is done or not you know what's going to happen markets are going to bounce higher why because they are going to write that out of the equation and take whatever evasive measure needed to protect their own interest the u.s businesses and that's what's happening right now that's called life game theory that's called political game theory that's called economic game theory so um this is the level 2720 and if we break that then we have the we have levels which was the 2018 break even level remember i remember going on and on like yeah we're, you know it looks like we're gonna break this and this was your this was your beautiful cup and handle inverse head and shoulder breakout that happened once uh, failed uh, on the 18 of 2000 uh january 18 2019 and then finally broke out and never looked back on um january 30th 2019 and i go through my videos and stuff at that time. I told you guys this is going to happen so if you look back at the overall picture then you're going to see that let me make this smaller it's all it, it's all a story that can that, that I'm showing you in the form of these charts so there's no mystery to it so this was the big breakout this was Christmas Eve massacre big move up sharp move down up little correction up nice correction then the breakout right here so this was your beautiful uh inverse head and shoulder cup and handle whatever you call it but more your inverse head and shoulder breakout 
2018 break-even level that was around 26.7. It broke up, zigzagged its way up. 99% of traders missed out on that rally. Then the market went up, it hit a roadblock, went down four days in a row, all kinds of stuff. That was the next buffer zone. Then it stayed above that. Sorry. And 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 then tried to stay above that and over the last four days fell below it. So this big red line, we don't have to think. That's why you just have to understand my charts. So I leave the thinking to me and then use your own own judgment to do what you need to do. Uh, but the from the technical uh, uh, thinking to me, that's why you guys are paying me a few bucks every month for these uh, amazing charts. This red line is it is what you got to watch for 2720. If we break that, we're going to 2760, and it's going to happen very very quickly. Now in the meantime, this is what I was talking about. What happens to falling wedges? The complacent shorts start shorting really hard at these levels, really hard at these levels. It becomes a coil spring because there's a major support level right here, major support level right here, maybe a little bit lower. This coil spring turns into and this happens 99% of the time. This is a falling wedge in the context of an internal indicator known as the full stochastics on the daily charts. It carries a lot of weight. It presses down, it presses down, markets can never go higher, and bang, it breaks out. And then right from around here, for reasons I explained to you, a joint statement coming out by Wednesday or so, by the Mexican delegation and uh, and the U.S. team saying yes, we're making constructive progress. Anything positive, and bang, market goes up. Now that doesn't change the trend completely. The trend change completes if the market can cross over 2840, 2850. I'm not even looking at that. I'm looking at reflex bounces, which will make your week, which will make your month, which most of you have never done because of your own fault, even though I've walked you guys through these situations every single time. So maybe this is your opportunity to do it and prove to yourself that you can do it. In the meantime, you can scalp during the day. I mean, you can do some scalp trades and stuff. Every day there's enough scalp trades to be done that I put out there which you can make some money off. So saying all that, I'm giving you the reason. So this is a falling wedge which will at one point break out because we are so oversold. We need to get a little bit more oversold. We need to put that final nail through the coffin. Just like, that's it. It's over. Nobody wants to buy U.S. stocks anymore. I mean, anyway, anyway, ask some of the people here. I mean, not here necessarily. But like, they're all waiting around for some like miracle moment where everything's going to be fine. No, it's never. Life is never fine. Life is an ongoing process of fixing things. <laughs> I don't know, you know, uh, that's, that's the way I look at life. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how wealthy you are, how poor you are. Life is all about fixing some issue. Like they say, big people, rich people have rich people's problem. Middle class people have middle class people's problem. And poor people have a lot of problems. So that's the way life is, guys, you know. Just because, you you know, somebody's a multimillionaire or a billionaire, you think they have problems? They got bigger problems, okay, than you'd imagine. So there we go. So that's where we are. See that? We're getting close to that. So that's your daily. Let's look at the weekly. Now the weekly, I'll be talking about this, and this is the one that excites me the most because this is the one which is a very high confidence trade trading chart. This is the one where you can buy something a week out, two weeks out. Um, and say, okay, I'm going to add more to it as long as I'm starting to see the signals turn. This is a cleaner chart. Why? Because it's a week. It cuts out the 15-minute garbage, the one-hour volatility. It cuts out the daily volatility. It's the week. I've walked you guys on these weekly charts many times before. Many times before. Till here, we were still in a bull flag. It was still that galloping horse pattern, right? As I explained, right there. Looked like a galloping horse right there, right? There you go, the Preakness. So, the Belmont Stakes. So, um, but then this happened. 
So it's no longer a bull flag. The bull flag broke. And now we are reaching support levels, which are, which you need to be laser targeted on. Now, whether you play the indices, whether you play some other stocks uh, on the front side, everything is somewhat, is has a correlation with the overall S&P 500. You know that. Of course, there are many different examples of where markets are down a lot and our stocks are up, like UNH, Anthem, consistent winners, Zillow, here and there, earnings plays. So that's a different story. I'm talking overall market. So saying all that, um, this one is looking to me, and this is just pattern recognition. Anyone can do this right there. What level is this here, this red line? 2718, 2720. Again, that comes into play. I repeat, might not get there, might get close to that because the machines are ready to squeeze that coil spring, let it go, i.e. the falling wedge breakout. Because at that point, the sentiment is so heavily negative, which is translated into bearish put action. The put call ratio maybe is above 1.4 or something. There's twin indicators are above two, like hardcore pessimistic readings and bang, the market goes the other way because the market's not in the business of the market makers, the big players are not in the business of paying somebody just because they're short. Just the business, they're not in the business of paying somebody because they're long. So they're trying to screw you guys, screw uh, 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 traders, especially novice retail traders or emotional traders, just when they think, they got the big one. You know what I'm talking about. So that's why, you know, might not even get there. Okay, 2720. And that completes the first pattern. Now, remember, the similar thing happened. And look at this picture, okay? This is going all the way back to 2018. 2018, lots of volatility. Remember that? Big time. I know most of you don't remember it. I remember it, okay? A huge volatility, 1, 1,200 points, 800 points. Compared to that, it's actually pretty minimal volatility, which brings me to another thing. Have you noticed how the VIX is not even above 20? Like, what the heck's going on? Like, the world's falling apart. And, 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 and the world's falling apart, meaning just, you know, that's what it seems like. You know, the China war, the Mexican trade war, we're thinking of putting big time tariffs on European auto imports. I mean, name it one after another. Like I said on my thing, we can't fight President Trump and that's he's the president. I'm not. OK, so you, you can't fight from a military standpoint, five battles at the same time. Your resources are depleted. You know, you need to pick your battle, stick to one, get get, you know, win that one, move on to the next one. You can maybe fight two at a time. You can't fight three or four at a time. It doesn't work like that. There's a lot of money in the world, and we don't all have. We're not the only country who has it. The only reason we can play and put pressure to correct a lot of different imbalances is because we are the strongest economy in the world. But we won't be for too long if we keep going like this. I don't care what you guys think. I know. Okay. And what makes our, uh, our economy so strong? is our U.S. businesses, and those U.S. businesses are starting to squeal. Our pillar of our strength is U.S. business. That's what, that's what the money is. That's what, the, that's what makes money for the United States, GDP. So if that starts to, if they start to get really pessimistic and they start to cut back on capital spending, I'm sorry, doesn't matter what you think, we're going down. And we don't want to go down. So the bulwark on, of, of, of this whole pushing other countries to do what needs to be done is because of American business. I don't care whether you like it or not. Okay? That's what capitalist societies are. So if American business is starting to squeal and starting to fight back against some of these policies by the administration, like it or not, it's not going to help anybody. So saying all that, uh, the fact is that um, from a technical standpoint, this is it.
we get a bounce. Remember, we're in a major head and shoulder. Head, left shoulder, right shoulder, exactly where we stopped, tried to go up and fail, right? Remember, this is the head and shoulder pattern, the flip the birdie pattern, right, with the neckline. So this part is this part. Left shoulder. Now this takes weeks to happen, but showing you how amazing it is. This is your right shoulder, and we are at the neckline right now. That neckline is 27. What is this neckline? Hold on. Yeah, about 27, 24, 27, 20. Right there. All right? So plain and simple. Head, left shoulder, right shoulder, neckline. We break the neckline. We're going down. We break the neckline, we're going down to 2018 break even level, which also happens to be around 2650, 2660, and that can happen. And if that happens, honestly speaking, for a short period, short period, maybe a couple of days, most, max, maybe a week, you buy the crap out of the market. Crap out of the market, and you'll make your year. That's a high probability trade. If we get down to a 2650. It's going to slip and slide and it's going to bang go up. And you'll be like, oh God, wow, look at that. But you got to have some real money in there at that point. Real money. All right. I've shown you guys this before. And I don't think any of you have ever taken really advantage of these climactic move, moves because you all waited around for something. Oh, well, I'll buy when I feel a little bit good. Yeah, by the time you felt good, it was up here. You still made some money, but what about this part that you refuse to make money on? You refuse to make money on. Think about that for a minute. The market gave you a chance. The charts gave you a chance. I told you guys to do it, but you said, no, 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 no. I don't want to make money. No, 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 no. That's it. It comes some kind of socialist move. Like, no, 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 no. This is like where the government's really throwing money off. Uh, the market's throwing money from like uh, uh, B-52 bombers, right? The green greenbacks are flying down. And you're like, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to buy it. Yeah, okay, great. So can this type of situation happen again? Sure, it can. But it cannot happen from unless we have major technical breakdowns. So where, how do we identify a major, major bottom? Well, it's in process. You can see that right here. Last time I did my, uh, uh, um, not Thursday, but the prior to that when I did the, uh, the video cast, we were here. And we were flattening like this. I said, we got to watch this because if this starts to break down, we're going down. That's exactly what happened. Go listen to my video from last Sunday. Or was it Monday? Okay. So now the way I'm reading it is we are getting there. Now, by the time it starts to remember, it happened here. I repeat, it happened here not too long ago. Just a few months ago, five months ago, six months ago. See the see the structure? That's where we are. We're the first part of this structure. Look, look carefully. Forget the chart above, look at the internals. Start recognizing patterns. Every crisis is the same for different reasons. So it's time to wake up, ladies and gentlemen, and get into the throes of the darkness where it's the cheapest. It's not there yet, but we are close. Now, will it be the same way as this? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. We have one, we have a couple of variables here which are different. We have the unexpected black swan tweets, whether it's from President Trump or whether it's comments coming out of China. I'll leave Mexico aside because, like I said, they're not going to start a trade war with us. So those are the two unquantifiable variables that cannot be quantified in a technical chart. That's why the biggest and the biggest and the strongest and the most richest hedge fund guys are doing nothing. Nothing. They're scared to short because the market goes up foreign points. They get busted because they're not playing with hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're playing with millions. 
and they can't even move that fast sometimes, regardless of all the technology they have in the form of the algo, uh, algorithmic high frequency trading black boxes. Even they're confused because you can't quantify a comment from either of the governments. And President Trump's tweets are instantaneous, five in the afternoon, like, what? It's like, you know, the iPhones go like, Ring! I know something big's going on, okay? Mexico tariff here, this, that. Then the Chinese retaliate. The Chinese at least have press conferences. You have time to prepare. With President Trump, he's just like, boom, right? So bottom line is, we. it looks, see that, this part? So this is where we are right now. It needs to go a little bit lower. And then by the time it starts to edge up, you if we see a hammer reversal of this magnitude, I don't care what happens the next day, you still got to buy, buy, buy. And if you see a turn, you stay long on the weekly charts. Doesn't matter what happens during the day. Now, Generally speaking, by the second week, the trend is established. The first week is massive short covering. So you want to play that to with the upper end of the second week starting. This, remember, it didn't just go up like that. It actually came down from here to here. So that was another 300 points down. And then by the third week, you notice that the candles build on top of each other. By the fourth week, you want to be out. Because that's when it starts to dawn into the regular emotional trader and the retail world and the news media. Like, okay, looks like we're going higher. But you got to watch the stochastics. And stochastics keep on doing this. You want to buy every major tactical dip. We're far from that right now. We don't know whether this is going to meander like this it might do that it might do this because things are pretty rough out there and that means the market will yeah move up a little bit keep on going down keep on going that downtrend will continue whether or not we have a massive crossover we have no idea yet okay if we get down towards these levels the lower bollinger which is around 2760 by that time Yes, we are going to get a crossover, and that's when you want to be long. So that's the story. You're going to make a lot of money. And you sit around and twiddle your thumbs like you did every single last uh, other time. If that's your problem, not mine. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at the S and P on the think or swim charts, and then we'll look at a couple of stocks. And just keep it in mind, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot going on in the world. All right. This is not. This is not. It's not that easy. So that's why you have guys like me who try to explain these things in very simple terms, so all of you can understand it better, and then use your own judgment and do what needs to be done. Because on your own, I don't think you guys will be able to do this. Okay. So this was the level I was watching. Look carefully. This is your E-minis. So not the, right live. We're down what 15. Come on, give us down 30 at the open. That's what I want. Seriously. So we have now lost the. Let's let's go over this for a minute. All right. This is this is this is your Texas bullhorn, right? Multiple. We might go into a stage. This is another thing I want to remind you. We might go into a stage where we do this and drive people nuts. I won't be nuts because I've gone through it before. I've gone through it as recently as last October. So I'm ready. So I'm trying to help you guys be ready and stop your bad habits of saying, oh, you know, it's too scary. You know, I'll buy when it's okay. It's never going to be okay. Once you accept that, you're going to make money. It's never going to be okay. Volatility is here to stay. It's suppressed volatility. The VIX should be at 25 right now, to be honest with you. Why not? Because the players who run the VIX, the machines that run the VIX, know that there is something about to happen which will spike the markets higher. The forward volatility 
is actually slightly lower than what than what the VIX is showing right now. There's a little backwardation going on, contango. Remember that term? So bottom line is this might happen. Big swings lasting days and days. But we'll leave it at that till it happens. So first level of, of support was, was the 50 right there. 28.73, you lost it big time. Lost it big time. By the way, we've lost $6 trillion on the market from the top. This is not a joke. And if you think President Trump is not watching this, you're living in la-la land, okay? We've lost $6 trillion in market value. You don't think that affects mom and pop and their pension funds and the firefighters fund and the policeman's pension fund and the military pension fund? I don't know what you're thinking, all right? This has real life effects, $6 trillion. It's not a joke, all right? So he's watching. And he's going to deliver because it goes like this. We're going to lose $10 trillion. And then it looks really great for the 2020 elections. I don't think so. Okay. So saying all that, this, uh, the couple of things here, and this I'll end the session. I'll show you the, 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 the uh, uh, McLeod oscillator. Tonight's session is really critical. Every session is critical, these webinars. But tonight I'm telling you the facts the way they are, like I always do. So try to help yourself and be prepare yourself when those big reversals come. I don't think we're good. the bulk of the, at least for now, the bulk of the major selling is done. That's why we have a falling wedge on the weekly, I'm sorry, on the daily that I went through, you, uh, through with you guys a few minutes ago on the daily e-mini charts. You can't endlessly fall. You fall, then you have a sharp bounce, then you fall again, if we are finally broken, which some indication is showing we might be. Like in other words, the bull market has stopped for now. It's too, you know, too early to call. So, um, so this, so we have the 200 day here. That would be the first level of reflex bounce, right? Try to kiss back, you know, get back to 200 day moving average, which we are doing fine till the Mexican tariff crap. So to 27.76, that's roughly 40 points from here, 40 times six or seven, that's a 300 point move on the Dow. Big deal. We can have that in the first 10 minutes of trading. So you have to prepare. This is the 150 day moving average. I showed you guys a chart on Friday, which boxed out this area and this perfect pattern symmetry. We slip below the 150. See, sli slipping below the 150 day moving average and the 200 day moving average is serious business. It's serious stuff. If you're working at a company who's doing business with the government, or if you're working in a financial company, you're not going to get your bonuses and you're going to, you might be online to get fired. Why? Because that's when they start losing real money. All right. So if you're worried about where your next paycheck is coming from, then this is directly tied in with these lines. Trust me. Okay. So generally speaking, breaking the 150 and the 200 day moving average like we did last November is a very horrific and painful event for everybody, for market traders, for pension fund retirees, for everybody, for businesses. And I don't foresee that happening. If that happens, we'll, we'll cross one bridge at a time. So bottom line is this is what I think is going to happen this week. We're going to fall towards 2720 and then we're going to attempt to bounce. That initial bounce will fail. Now, only thing that will change the overall directional bias is some sort of limited, limited, I say, de-escalation of hostilities with China and basically that's it. 
that'll do it. That'll push the market up a thousand points within two or three days. Easy. A escalation, a further escalation from where we are, will start putting a lot of pressure on this 2700, 2729. And that means that we are going to free fall a little bit more. And I can see the levels where we can free fall up. But anyway, so this is what I showed might happen. So um, a little bit lower, and then we slip below the, we create a hammer right there. We create a hammer. And then we go higher. Now here is the fundamental difference. Can somebody tell me what it is this time and and uh, what happened um, on um, in March? Take a look at it. Take a look at this. I mean, I'm saying this is a pattern that might repeat itself, right? Right here. And then the mar market bounces. What is the only other major difference? in the picture Aside, you know the candles look similar what is the other big difference come on somebody step up and tell me hey can you guys hear me what are you guys scared of i'm going to bite your head off i'm trying to teach you guys something come on there's something glaring in there and Please, if you guys are traders, volume is something i'm noticing what is no, it's nothing to do with volume, Tom. Look, okay. look, look on the external picture. It's staring at all of you. What is the difference? This pattern might play out, right? Because it's a head, left shoulder, right shoulder. At the neckline, there is always an immediate bounce most of the time. What is the other difference that's being played out here? See, if you guys can notice this type oh, of thing. Jesus. Yeah, the, the moving average is rolling thank down. Thank you, thank you. And the fact that none of you else can even figure this out, this simple thing out, means you never, re you're not really, you never really made any real money in the market. I mean, I'm being straight in the face. I mean, come on. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Look at the moving averages. We were in an uptrend. They were just whizzing by. Here, the moving averages are curling down. And I've said it always, when you see the 34 about to cross below, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't, I don't know. Okay. But this is curling down. That's why we are technically at this point broken. Because if this the orange line curls below the red line, that means the 34 crosses over the 50, below the 50, that the 20 day is diving down. The five day is diving down. Here, regardless of the pattern symmetry, they were all cruising higher. Come on. All right. So I'm noticing these things. They're simple things. All right. It's like a military sniper. You know, you're looking at somebody and you know who to shoot. You know, I mean, which bad guy to take out? You're going to take out one of your own. I mean, come on. So that's that's exactly the answer. Thank you. And this is not a quiz. This is just to help you all. So the moving averages are bending down. That does not bode too well for the longer term picture of the U.S. stock markets. Now there have been cases where they have where they have down and then suddenly moved up. All that is predicated on what will happen with China, what will happen with Mexico, what will happen with European auto tariffs what will happen overall with our economy. So that is the fundamental difference. And it doesn't worry me because I'm ready. This breaks 2720, okay? And we can go, we go to 2706. That's your consolidation channel. Now, let me show you another picture, which is very bullish. Not very bullish, but bullish. So forget the moving averages. I know it's getting closer. They might not cross down. Okay. Here is your large rising wedge. And this channel is still a consolidation channel. It's still a bull flag on the daily. Still a bull flag. Seems wild, but it's true. You can see that clearly. This is still 
it's a wide, cons it's a long consolidation channel lasting about a month or so, but it's nothing extraordinary. We came a long way up. So this is still a bull flag. And if things get corrected a little bit on the front end with the politic political dynamics, then the market can make a sharp move higher towards 2870. Now, the other thing that's happening is that the distance travel, the standard deviation from the moving averages is now almost, in my opinion, at minus five, minus six to seven. Just the way we move way up here, away from the moving averages, right? So that was more like a plus four or five. Now, the distance from the from the the moving averages is very it's 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 pretty significant. I would say it's a minus seven, minus six, maybe. So what does that mean? That means we have deviated too much from the moving averages. And generally speaking, bull or bear market, the markets like to at least come back to the highway. And that highway is somewhere in the vicinity of 2840, 2850. That is 100 points from here. That's 100 points from here. That means it's roughly 700 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which can be had because we are at this point getting pretty deep oversold. And I explained to you the coil spring and all that stuff. They're all tied in together. This is still diving down. And let's take a look at the weekly. The weekly says, what does the weekly say on the stochastics? Can somebody step up and tell me? What does the weekly say on the stochastics? This is your external, which is obviously not looking good on the weekly. But um, what is, let me move these lines. And this is really important. This is We're money. We're not over yeah, exactly, Mary. Okay, we are far from oversold. Um, and I shouldn't say far from oversold. We are not really, really oversold because the two things I look at, because I like to look at things simply. Like I like to look at things like my old days back on Wall Street. I, I take complicated stuff and try to make it simple for my, for my, you know, big clients. So if I, if you look at the percentage K, which is the, which is the uh, thing line, uh, this orange line or dark orange line, Generally speaking, it dives down before it starts to move higher. It dives down before it starts to move higher. Small corrections, it moves down a little bit shallow, then moves higher. Then the percent, and then the overall, uh, 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 um, what do you call, percentage D, which is your white line here on the stochastic, that's dove down. That's a nine. So that has completed this pattern. But the secondary line is still hovering here. So what that tells you, we're not done yet. And if you look at the weekly chart, it looks pretty crappy. It looks pretty crappy, okay? And it should look crappy with all the crap that's happening out there. So we have lost the 34 moving average. The overall moving average is still moving sideways. Thank God, that's a good thing, okay? Because when they start to creep down, we're in a full-fledged mini bear market that lasts a couple of months, period. Because all through this debacle, we never broke, like I said in my last video. All through this debacle, these lines were still moving sideways. They're still doing it, so we have a good shot. And I ended on the last video, I explained the head and shoulders pattern where we can come down to, which is 2600, create a massive, massive head and shoulder, and then go towards new highs. And that can happen too, because this was a lot of resistance. I mean, lots of support, lots of support. So if you ask me, let's get a 2,000 point drop down. Let's be in all spy puts, feel like millionaires, and then buy the crap out of the market right there. Is it that simple? No. Is it that hard? Not really. But the problem with the markets are the machines know where the emotions are, and they don't let it happen. They will drop the market, let's say. Well, let's say the machines want to drop the market 1,000 points. They never do it during the day. So what happens with frustrated retail traders? They say, no, 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 I'm getting out. Just the way they got out on so many situations where the markets were just going higher. And remember what I used to say those days, just a few weeks ago, uptrend intact, uptrend intact, uptrend intact. I don't say that now because uptrend is not intact. So the same behavioral philosophy is being played out on the short side. The shorts and uh, when we buy the spy puts, we also 
when we're seeing definitive signs that this is not oversold, as Mary correctly pointed out, like Tom pointed out, you know, with the, with the moving average and stuff, it shows that we after, we are going down. So intraday, we get these waves of buying and we get out of our spy puts. And then you see end of the day, that same thing that you sold flat or maybe 10, made 10% on it, which is nothing unless you had a lot of money in it, is up 60, 70, 80%. Am I right or wrong? I know I'm right, what I'm saying. So discipline on the long side and discipline on the short side are same, are the same uh, cognitive variables in our brains. We need to be convicted on the short side based on the technicals and we need to be, we need to have strong conviction on the upside based on the technicals. So if all hell breaks loose, then we are going down to 2600 and kissing on the weekly charts, this uptrending 150 week moving average at 2561. Wouldn't that be a beauty if we were all the way short? But it won't happen in a straight line. And that's what's going to screw many of you up. But right now, technically, we're broken. So that's it. Now, last thing. And that doesn't mean that you're going to make money. If the market opens down 400 points and you short the market first thing in the morning, you probably lose money because the market will most probably end, up, end down 100 points, even though technically we're going down. All right? That's the reality of the markets. So you got to take your profits. you got to regroup. And then, unless you want to put everything in, so you know exactly it's going to go there, there is no 100% guarantee we're going to 2,600 or 2,700 for that matter. None. It's just probabilities. So here we are on the uh, NIMO. Uh, this was Friday's close. We're minus 59. Minus 59. Depending on what happens, I always look at it end of the day because that gives me a better reading. We're minus 59, minus 66, minus 65.58, minus 110. Generally, I like the minus 60 level because at that point, the market has a short term reflex bounce exactly based on, I mean, exactly correlates with what I just explained to you guys in the last 20 minutes or half an hour. That's it. So we're minus 59. Looks like it's heading down a little bit more. Um, and if we get towards minus 66, minus 70, you got to buy. We'll have a multi-day rally. No doubt. It's the way it works. I don't make this up. Okay? So that's it. Um, we need to like to see the stochastics on the NIMO come down to these levels where the bounce is more um, more of a conviction bounce. Um, we'll see. So, all right, guys. Uh, oh, well, last thing I had it up here, which is my SPX533. These are all proprietary charts. Okay? You guys can replicate these. So... You know, Nimo you can replicate. This one I don't think you can replicate. Um, let's take let's take a look at this. Um, you can see here we're almost there, but not quite there yet. Here's the big negative. This one has now slipped into negative territory. So if this keeps on continuing in these histograms, which I've showed you guys way back when when they were down here and we're starting to move, I said these histograms generally go positive. Now that they have gone negative, if they start to expand down. Even if the market is trying to push higher, that means the underlying trend is intact going down. So I'm going to be watching this. And this I can update during the day. This I can update during the day. Uh, this is a weekly one. This is a weekly one. It's there, but not there. You want to be somewhere in here with some major buys. I mean, shape-wise on the stochastics. So I still would love 2650, 2700. The problem is everybody, every bozo out there likes the same. If you listen to some of the hardcore bears, they're like, oh, I'd like to see. You know, we're definitely going to 2600. Man, dude, I wish you stopped saying that. Because when these bears get that like that, guess what the machines do? They never take you there. Which is fine with me. I love playing the long side more than the short side. So you know what I'm saying? So that's it. Um, because the bearish sentiment now is like really heavy on Wall Street, uh, retail investors, you name it. Even I'm short term bearish. So think about that for a minute. You know, what more could you ask for? You want to buy the crap out of the market at this point. So 
So basically, this is your weekly and generally when on the weekly, and the weekly takes a bunch of days. The problem is we are all impatient. I'm impatient. You guys are impatient. We want money now. So that's why sometimes we just, a lot of times we give back, give away trades that we know we're right on, whether on the short side or the long side, you know, we got to control our impatience. I mean, I try it every day. So, um, so we have to be patient on the short trade and we're getting there. And the snapback can happen with one tweet. And I warned you guys that that's the snapback, the four or 500 point type of rally can happen on the high probability joint press conference with the Mexican prime minister and the team. Uh, and our, our boys on our side saying that, yes, they had a constructive discussion. That's all they had to say. That's it. You know, and the markets will jump like go nuts. Uh, so this is your weekly. Uh, this is your daily. Now, in the interim, do not miss out on all the individual counter trend stocks that we trade. You know, I like Qualcomm off this level. Stock was up. Market was way down. Right. I, I like these uh, playing these on bad days. I like playing, or even on good days, you know, swing trades, things like Zillow, things like uh, uh, Anthem, uh, United Health, uh, Netflix. Netflix is the goddamn best trade to play because it has no China exposure. And every other day we make money on it. I mean, I've, it's faster trades, but we make money on it. What does Netflix have to do with, you know, with China? Apple and all of them, they're all tied in with that. Google, they're under the radar right now. Antitrust, you know, we love trying to kill our own companies. You know, the U.S. Justice Department and stuff and all administrations, Republican and, and, and Democrat, they all go after it. Remember they used to went after Microsoft in the 1990s or 2000s? They wanted to break it up. They pulled Bill Gates in front of Congress. Like, what the hell's wrong with us? Why do we always go after our best institutions that made America great? I have no idea. I could never understand it. I'll never understand it. We always love trying to break up our best companies so that to give all the bear meat to all the rest of the world saying, hey, you're going to not to hurt us. We'll just hurt ourselves. But you know what the best part is? That even if they break up Google and Facebook, can somebody answer what's going to happen to the stock price? Come on, wake up. You guys are smart. Tell me. JB, you're a lawyer. You tell me. When you, if you broke up Facebook today, um, it would break up into Instagram and it would break up into their, you know, Facebook, uh, original Facebook. And it'll probably, you know, divisions would break up. One would be WhatsApp, one would be Instagram. What would happen to the intrinsic value of the, of the company? No answer? Anyone? In my opinion, the price would go up. That's right, because you are breaking up, you're unlocking value of a large corporation. Now it's looked at as one entity. You break them up. All of a sudden, you are unlocking the intrinsic value. If Amazon today decides they're going to break up Amazon Web Services, which is their largest money maker, and keep Amazon Retail, which is their money loser, what do you think is going to happen? Amazon stock's going to go through the roof. Come on, guys. You know, if the Chinese were listening to this and none of you responded, they think we're a bunch of stupid uh, jerks, right? We don't want them to think that, do we? Come on, guys, think a little bit faster. Seriously. So you could go after our greatest companies and break them up because that's what the politicians want. Because they never built a company on their own, did they? No. They just screamed and shouted and, 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 and uh, did all that stuff, which did nothing for our country. These companies built America. I'm dead serious. Think about it. Yes, they have their faults. So what? So you want to break them up? Good. I'll buy their stock because their stock's going higher because you're unlocking value. So it's really stupid when I hear these comments. Oh, you know, this and that. Well, let them, let them go after it. Bunch of morons anyway. And you know who makes money? The lawyers. The antitrust lawyers, they're the only ones making the money. So keep on filling the swamp for the lawyers. I'm dead serious. I'm very passionate about this. You know, people, blood, sweat, and tears, they start from a garage and then they change the face of the world with their innovation and inventions. Americans uh, uh, and other people from other countries who have come and built this, these great companies. And then you want to basically vilify them. They're like bad people. And the lawyers make money in the meantime. Exactly. It's just moronic. Anyway, uh, so look at the look at the daily charts. The daily is still uh, this is still pointing down, negative. Getting there. 
We need to see a little curl on this. We were starting to get that. We had a red or a black doji here. That was the Mexican tariff announcement, uh, which I think we will resolve on a positive basis. I keep on repeating that this week. So we should get a little turn here. So I'll be showing you this. This this I can update during the day. So I'll show it a couple of times during the day, at least twice during the day, so you can see it. If you start to see a turn on this, and you start and 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 then the other indicators are starting their turn, then we should be good to go. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am um, pretty exhausted here, uh, but it was very fruitful. Thanks for attending. Futures are down about 14. What we want in simple terms is this: we want a hard down open. We don't want it really up, up, open. Why? Because they're going to slam the market. That's it. There's a lot more margin calls that need to be satisfied. Believe me when I tell you. Okay? And everybody's scared. So the minute it goes up, they'll be like, okay, you know, please uh, put me on the money market fund. That's how it works, all right, in the real world. So, um, so we need a hard down open or a limited down open. We need uh, a little flush. And then we need to start to see the recovery. We need to see the internals do the same thing. We need to see some positive vibes coming out, which I think will happen with the Mexican and the U.S. trade teams. China, it's going to be the same thing, you know, till whatever they're talking about. They're still talking, believe me. You know, don't listen to the, all, all this stuff on the on the top. They're still talking. Maybe something will happen on that side, but the but the um, expectations are very low, which is good. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. God bless you all. Thank you. Anytime, Tom. Um.